Hello. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to make the orcs and the objects to be collected move across the screen. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a function that can make any object move. So we're going to call it function move object. We're going to take in three parameters. The first one is object, and this will be a string with the ID of the object that we want to move. The next one will be the x step, and this is how far we want it to move on the x-axis every time move object is called. The second one will be y step, which will be how far we want it to move on the y-axis any time the move object is called. Create our curly brackets. Now we're going to declare a new variable called new x, and we're going to set it equal to the current x position of the object plus the value in the parameter x step. Then the same thing with a y, new y equals get y position of the string in the object variable plus y step. The third thing we're going to do is we're going to call the set position function. We're going to pass it the string in object. Then we're going to pass it the value in new x and the value in new y. This will cause the object to be moved to the new coordinates. Finally, we're going to call the wraparound function and pass it the object's ID because that way if it's on the edge, it'll come back around to the other side. This function by itself won't cause the objects to move. We need to call the function at periodic intervals so that it activates the code inside it. So what we're going to do is we are going to write a function that will call move object over and over again while the game is being played. We don't want the app to start as soon as the player loads it up. So we're going to create a start button to give the player time to get their bearings before they get the game running. So we're going to go back to design. We're going to create a button. We're going to give the button an ID, button underscore start. We're going to go to events. We could write this event in the code mode. It's just easier to go to events and then click insert and show code. We're going to get rid of this default line here. That will just output button start clicked. Next, we're going to put a timed loop inside this anonymous function. So we're going to go to control. We're going to scroll down and grab timed loop, and we have it here. If you prefer, you can just type this all out. Timed loop has its own anonymous function. As a default, timed loop will run every thousand milliseconds or every one second. For now, we're going to decrease this interval to 50 milliseconds, or this will run 20 times every second. Our first call to move object will have the program move orc1. So we're going to say move object. We're going to pass the string that is the ID of the first orc. So image underscore orc underscore one. Then we got to have a comma. We got to pass how much on the X we want it to move on each call. So we want it to move one to the X. I'm going to have a comma. Then I'm going to have it move one on the Y. So I'm going to pass one to the Y step parameter. We'll have a semicolon to end. Now let's try running it to see how the game plays. We'll hit run. We'll click button to activate the timed loop. And we can see the orc moving down and to the right. Let's reset this. And let's call move object for the other three orcs. I'm going to change the string in this one to image orc2. In this case, I want the orc to move to the right two pixels for every call. So I'm going to change this argument to two. So the value that goes to the x step parameter will be 2. Now for the third orc, I'm going to change it to orc 3. And I want it to move 1 pixel to the right and 2 pixels down. If you want to make the orcs move in the other direction, you can set one or both of these numbers to a negative. Now let's do the same thing for the items to be collected. So I'm going to say move object. This one will be image item underscore one. I'm going to have it move two pixels to the right and two pixels down for every call. I'm going to do the same thing for the other three.
make sure that you've got the exact correct ID in here. Otherwise, it's not going to run. Okay, let's see how this works. We're going to hit run. We're going to press the button to start it. And we see the characters moving around. And I'm going to have my Noit try to avoid the orcs and try to collect the objects. We don't have any collision detection built in yet, so nothing's going to happen. But we can see the basic functionality of the game is present. I'm going to make a couple of tweaks to make this a little better. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give my button a proper name. I'm going to go to Design. I'm going to leave the ID as button underscore start, but I want to make the text say start. I'm going to move my objects to be collected to different points of the screen. Make sure you've got your cursor squarely over the center, otherwise you may accidentally resize them. If you see this hand icon, you can click down with your left mouse button and move it around to the proper position. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the knight move a little further with each click. So I'm going to go back to code. I'm going to scroll up to distance, and I'm going to change this to 12. For those of you who are using blocks, let's go down and take a look at the functions. We'll click Show Blocks. We'll scroll down. And we've got our Move Object function. And then we've also got our Anonymous function attached to the Button Start button. We can play the game one more time to see how it works with the modifications. So we'll say Run, Start. I can move my character around, dodge the orcs, try to collect the items. For our next lesson we're going to learn how to do collision detection so that when you hit an orc you die and when you collect an object it disappears. To see the next video in this curriculum please click on the video link in the lower left hand corner of the screen. To see the entire curriculum please click on the video link in the lower right hand corner of the screen.